Good morning. You know, my mood just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> and I, I, I just have so much joy in my heart as, as Spirit keeps revealing more things to me. You know, because of, because of the legal actions in which I'm involved, I subscribe to a lot of alerts and email groupings and stuff like that that, that keep me abreast of what's happening in the world of, of law and courts because I'm, like it or not, I have to be concerned because I'm involved myself in these matters. And for many of you that aren't involved in matters with the courts, they may not make any difference. But I'm telling you folks, I'm telling you, they do make a huge difference because what we're in in this ninth wave is a shift in consciousness that is changing the entire world. And an email that I received yesterday, that I read uh, last night actually, or perhaps it was late afternoon, I'm not sure when I first saw it, uh, but I been was looking at it last night before I went to bed and again this morning after I came out of the meditation room. So today the title is Groundbreaking U.S. Supreme Court Ruling and the little blurb that I just wrote is on June 16th, 2011. That's just a little over a month ago, folks. The U.S. Supreme Court overturned a U.S. Court of Appeal ruling and, believe it or not, reasserted not only state sovereignty but individual sovereignty as well. Did you hear what I just said? And we thought the government was going to hell in a handbasket. This unanimous decision, as I see it, is a major turning point, a visible shift in consciousness of the ruling elite. All things are possible. Watch for miraculous reversals in the remainder of this ninth wave. I'm actually going to take time to open a page here and read you some of what is said in this uh, ruling document that was actually written by uh, Kennedy on the Supreme Court and Ginsburg uh, filed a, a concurring opinion and Breyer joined in. Uh, they completely reversed and remanded the, the lower court, which is not a very low court. The U.S. Court of Appeal is a pretty high court, and the U.S. Supreme Court overturned it. This is wonderful news. Let me, let me read. This is, this is Carol Ann Bond versus the United States, number 9-1227-564, U.S. Supreme Court, etc. Anyway, I'm going to read just a few paragraphs, or actually several paragraphs, from this ruling that came to me in the email. I'm not the one that went and, and, and pulled this out, uh, but it's amazing good news. Good news. The Court of appeal he Appeals held that a state was not a party to the federal criminal proceeding, peti proceeding. Petitioner had no standing to challenge the statutes as an infringement upon powers reserved to the states. Having concluded that petitioner does have standing to challenge the federal statute on these grounds, this court now reverses that determination. The federal balance, and this is all quotes from the, from the ruling, by the way, of the Supreme Court. The federal balance is, in part, an end in itself to ensure that states function as political entities in their own right. State sovereignty is not just an end in itself. Rather, federalism secures to citizens the liberties that derive from the diffusion of sovereign power. Federalism, and, and I'm not going to read, it, it's giving the location of, of the other rulings uh, from other U.S. Supreme Court rulings. That one was from 1992 uh, 19, and 1991, two different cases. Federalism secures the freedom of the individual. Woo! Yay! It allows states to respond through the enactment of positive law to the initiative of those who seek a voice in shaping the destiny of their own times without having to rely solely upon the political process 
that control a remote central power. The individual liberty secured by federalism is not simply derivative of the rights of the states. Federalism also protects the liberty of all persons within a state by ensuring that laws enacted in excess of delegated governmental power cannot direct or control their actions. See Ibid. By denying any one government complete jurisdiction over all the concerns of public life, federalism protects the liberty of the individual from arbitrary power. When government acts in Essex of its lawful powers, that liberty is at stake. The limitations that federalism entails are not therefore a matter of rights belonging only to the states. States are not the sole intended beneficiaries of federalism. An individual has a direct interest in objecting to laws that upset the constitutional balance between the national government and the states when the enforcement of those laws causes injury that is concrete, particular, and redressable. Fidelity to principles of federalism is not for the states alone to vindicate. The public policy of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania enacted in its capacity as sovereign has been displaced by that of the national government. Impermissible interference with state sovereignty is not within the enumerated powers of the national government. An action that exceeds the national government's enumerated powers undermines the sovereign in interests of states. Bond, like any other defendant, has a personal right not to be convicted under a constitutionally invalid law. Due process is a guarantee that a man should be tried and convicted only in accordance with valid laws of the land. Do you hear what they're saying, folks? In this case, Bond argues that the statute under which she was charged, U.S. Code 229, exceeds Congress's enumerated powers and violates the Tenth Amendment. Other defendants might assert that a law exceeds Congress's power because it violates the ex post, ex post facto clause or the establishment clause or the due process clause. Whenever the claim succeeds on the merits, success on the merits would require a reversal of the conviction. An offense created by an unconstitutional law the court has held is not a crime. A conviction under such a law is not merely erroneous, but is illegal and void and cannot be a legal cause of imprisonment. If a law is invalid as applied to the criminal defendant's conduct, the defendant is entitled to go free. A court has no prudential license to decline to consider whether the statute under which the defendant has been charged lacks constitutional application to her conduct. And that is so even where the constitutional provision that would render the conviction void is directed at protecting a party not before the court. Reversal required even if, going forward, Congress would cure the unequal treatment by extending rather than invalidating the criminal prescription. In short, a law beyond the power of Congress for any reason is no law at all. The validity of Bond's conviction depends upon whether the Constitution permits Congress to enact the uh, 18 U.S. Code 229. Her claim that it does not must be considered and and decided on must be considered and decided on the merits. And then this email that I received said that. This would mean that the following are also revived. Mad, Madbury versus Madison from 1803. The very essence of civil, civil liberty certainly consists in the right of every individual to claim the protection of the laws whenever he receives an injury. One of the first duties of government is to afford that protection. In Great Britain, the king himself is sued in the respectful form of a petition 
and he never fails to comply with the judgment of his court. A law repugnant to the Constitution is void. An act of Congress repugnant to the Constitution cannot become a law. The Constitution supersedes all other laws, and the individual's rights shall be liberally enforced in favor of him, the clearly and, express, and expressly designated beneficiary. Folks, do you understand anything of what I just read to you? I mean, this is enormously powerful. At a time that we thought that the government, as I said, was going to hell in a handbasket, that the powers were being were being concentrated in the federal government and in the state and in the and in the elites power grab for a new world order all of a sudden the US Supreme Court which has made some horrible decisions in the past makes this decision in June of 2011 during the ninth wave of the Mayan calendar reasserting for each of us our individual rights and you better believe this will be in my brief before the Court of Appeals. You better believe, because, the, because Spirit is bringing to me synchronistically that which I need, and I am, a, I am invoking principles of Masonic principles that have been long established, and, and most of these judges that are going to be hearing my case, if not all three of them, are probably 33rd degree Masons. And there is a spiritual foundation for masonry, folks, like it or not, and they have left the markings in plain view. I mean, I am so encouraged by what I see happening, because this is consciousness, folks. This is a shift in consciousness. This is the reversal of, of the power grab of the elite by the elite. Listen to me. This is the United States Supreme Court. And other courts will be following suit. And people that, are, that have, have cases before the court would be foolish not to use this newest ruling, less than a month old, in their own case to get the lower courts to pay attention, as I'm going to be doing in my brief. And I've totally changed the way I'm doing my brief. I mean, my brief is being revolutionized just in the past few days because of the new, the, new, the new information that's coming into me. And I was fretting and, and, and beside myself with worry and trying to fit, as I said yesterday, into a box that I didn't fit into, studying all these laws and looking at all these laws. And all of a sudden I get this ruling that reaffirms divine law, natural law, constitutional law, higher law and reaffirm sovereignty, my sovereignty, your sovereignty. This is a sovereignty issue, folks, and the elite, the elite, the government of the United States just reaffirmed it for each of us. This is powerful, powerful information. And you may think politics and stuff like this has nothing to do with you. My friend, it has everything to do with every one of us everything to do. There is no division. There is no division between spiritual and political or between spiritual and anything else. Spiritual encompasses the whole thing. I've been saying that. I hope you're getting it. I'm getting it, folks. I'm getting it. And I invite you to get it too. Because this is part of the change that's happening, that's shifting the entire world, and it is a change of consciousness. Consciousness do, drives reality, folks, not the other way around. Well, when unconsciousness is in the driver's seat, you get what we've had. But now consciousness, an awakening, is happening, and it's shifting everything, as this Supreme Court ruling indicates. It's a beautiful thing and a beautiful time to be alive. Thank you for listening. And I hope you're as excited about what I shared as I am. Namaste.